hello everyone this is Ron again with Strangely Normal and today I'm taking a look at a game that uh, as a teenager I played quite a lot played played a, an absolute ton of um, that game is called Hunter the Reckoning Redeemer as you are seeing on the screen right there um, this game was released in uh, 2003 developed by High Voltage Software and uh, and published by uh, Vivendi Universal uh, the game is basically sort of like it plays more like a bit of a modern version of kind of gauntlet or gauntlet style gameplay except it's set in kind of like um, a gothic sort of dark modern fantasy uh, kind of setting and it's actually based off of a, uh, a pen and paper RPG system and uh, this particular game is actually the third in the series um, the second one was Hunter the Reckoning Wayward which was released on PlayStation 2 but not Xbox and then the first game Hunter the Reckoning was released on Xbox and PlayStation 2 um, don't know why they um, chose to release them like that wasn't really able to find anything on that but um, games are all pretty much the same uh, you run around and you run around in a top-down kind of perspective you shoot stuff you you hack stuff apart as you'll be seeing shortly um, I'm going to jump into a game that I already have in, pro in progress um, so I was playing this earlier today, and I wanted to do that because I wanted to show a I, I wanted to show a character uh, after they've been able to get him powered up because there were some kind of RPG-ish elements and things you can do. Uh, I didn't want to start right from the beginning on that. Um, as you can see here, uh, I'm just going to go over them briefly. Uh, there's there's these different hunters. These are like the characters, um, and they're pretty much kind of sort of like archetypes, like Avenger. He's a big tough guy. Uh, Defender, she's kind of like a tank, um, sort of averages. The judge, he focuses on conviction, which is like this game's version of like magic. And then Martyr is mostly speed. Um, I usually play as the Martyr because uh, the Martyr is really fast and uh, with, with her powers and the things you can do with them, just completely broken as a character, which I will hopefully be showing you. And then Redeemer, um, she, I did, I did actually play through the game with this character. Um, she's kind of weird, uh, mostly melee focused, but has a lot of more like subtle area effect magics that like slow or confuse guys. And then there's unlockable characters. Um, I know who both of these guys are. The one with these two dags, that, that guy's name is Carpenter. Uh, you actually duke it out with him during the game. I'm uh, In the game I'm playing, I'm already past the part with the five of them. He's actually kind of a neat character to watch. Um, some interesting voice work. And then that guy right there is uh, the guy that's wayward. Um, he appeared in the other game. I haven't actually ever unlocked them um, because this game has an absolute ton of unlockables. You can even unlock um, the enemies you fight and play as them, which is really interesting. But I'm going to get into this here, play for a few minutes, and uh, we'll, we'll see what this game's all about. Hopefully I'll be able to show you um, just just how, how fun it can be and, um, and actually how smoothly it plays. Uh, even today... Um, still looks fairly decent. Not 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 the greatest looking game, but uh, definitely playable. See, uh, I'm that person with the big um, with the big with the light source there. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do now is you're probably seeing there some icons changing. I'm gonna go to this green one, which is which is my edge. That's like my magic, and uh, I'm going to activate that. Which now makes me move super fast and hit really hard. Now, now when characters use their edges, it uses that blue bar, which is their edge power. It's basically mana. Um, the funny thing, uh, the, the the interesting thing about the martyr though, is that is that when she goes to use her edges, um, she 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 uses she doesn't use a large portion of her edge power, as the other characters do. She 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 uses a small portion of her health and edge power, and. Um, and as a result, she she can actually use more, more edges. However, she's 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 also a bit more risky. But and also, but then I do stuff like this, where I just carve through a whole bunch of guys. And uh, you may see those three meters up in the up in up in the upper left, along with the red and blue bar. That's basically your HUD. Uh, the red one is health. Blue one is like your energy edge power. Um, on that. And then, as you, and then those numbers are for skills. As you saw, you probably just saw one go from 12 to 13. That was my melee skill, along with that, along with um, that little noise. 
that is part of how how, how I really liked this character. Um, each each of the three skills, which is melee, range, and conviction, basically melee, range, and magic. Um, ooh, I found a key. Yay, keys. Ooh, a shotgun. Oh, ooh, this is actually a rifle. This is one of my favorite weapons. You can pick up weapons, much like in uh, Gauntlet. But uh, but back to talking about the skills. Um, these skills, you, you upgrade them by using them. And whenever you upgrade a skill, it, 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 it refills your life of energy bars. Well, with the Martyr, w whenever I use this edge, which I think is called like Invigorate or something, um, and, and, and it buffs my, my speed and damage, whenever I deal damage, it helps raise my Conviction skill. So it makes it super easy for uh, the Martyr to just crank out tons of damage really fast and gain tons of levels really fast and never really have to worry about their health if you know what you're doing. Um, um, the, when, when I played this game, I picked up this character because I had played some of the previous ones and I had really enjoyed um, just the Martyr just for the speed. But in this game, um, once, once I realized the things that I could do and just how ridiculously overpowered I could be, by just using the game's mechanics like that, um, it was it was incredible just how quickly I like tore through the game with this character. Um, I have beat it with the other characters, and the other characters do actually stack. The other characters do have ways to make them and make them be just as powerful as as the martyr. At least at, when when it's used like that, it's just they tend to work a little bit differently. The martyrs one um, I always liked because I kind of found it out, and uh, and it was just really easy to integrate into. Um, playing with her. Yeah, here, all those, all the, in this section, you probably saw that little blurb. In this section, uh, what we're, what I'm doing is I have to blow up those red canisters, because, uh, they have this toxin that's mutating people, and I have to stop it. Um, let's see, I think I'm gonna break out some gunplay here. This is actually a weapon you find. Every, every character does have, um, both basic melee weapons, that they have actually various combos. Um, you don't really need to know most of them. Most of them it's just stuff like that, which is just you hold on right trigger, and then when it stops, you let it go and it finishes it. And then you have basic ranged weapons. Uh, the the melee and ranged weapons do vary based on character. This 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 person this person has uh, dual pistols and what looks like those like big knives, axes kind of things. One of them has a revolver. Another one has a rifle. Um, another one has and then one of them has a sawed-off double barrel, and the other one also has a crossbow. But but they can all pick up various guns to use that have ammo. And I'm going to use this one that I like, which is just a, um, a bolt-action rifle. And uh, I really like it. Um, it has a lot of it, it has it has a nice damage and a good range on it. And then those orbs you see, those those are actually um, health and conviction. I'm, I'm probably going to confuse conviction and mana. If I say conviction or mana, just assume they're interchangeable in terms of this game, because they practically are. Let's see. In this part, I'm just running around these areas. Um, and it's just, uh, this part, it's not really doing a good job of showing the game off a little bit, because it's a very dark part, uh, which is actually part of the storyline. But um, the game actually doesn't look too bad overall. Um, a lot of a lot of dark colors, a lot of dark textures, but uh, it plays pretty smoothly, and um, and and there are actually some some fairly lengthy cinematics that aren't uh, just absolutely terrible. What am I doing? I'm probably gonna die here. Okay, come on. There we go. Now I got it. Too busy talking, not in the game. Okay, let me just switch back here. Yeah, I always, uh, I really liked this game just because it was, it was really fast. It was, it's a really good and basic, uh, kind, kind of twin stick shooter. As I said, very much kind of just like Gauntlet, but in a more modern side, sort of uh, gothic, gothic dark fantasy setting. Which, being a teenager, 
and liking metal, well, that was just uh, right up my alley at that age. But, uh, but the actual mechanics of the game are pretty smooth, and at first when I started playing it, it was a, they were kind of strange, because, because most of the face buttons don't actually, are actually used to switch between things, like the X button is used to switch between your basic weapons, the Y button is used to switch between your magic powers, and then the B button is used to switch between wh whatever weapons you've picked up. Um, at first, it's kind of confusing, but but once you get the hang of it, it actually makes it very easy and efficient to switch to switch between using magic powers or switching to melee or some other range thing pretty quickly and and easily, and which is very helpful when you're fighting like 20, 30 enemies at once, and you have to corral them and just kind of be on top of things. Um, Yeah, those spirits right there, they can actually, um, I think I may have passed the part where it shows up, but they can actually, like, possess humans. And, um, and then, and then you have to pick up, like, like, some type of ammo to shoot the humans with, um, to turn them back to normal. Or you can just kill the humans, it's really up to you on that one. I think there's a flamethrower over here, I'll grab that. There we go. Flamethrower is not bad. I mean, it works, but I tend to prefer shotguns and machine guns overall. Ooh, a flare gun. And then there's just various weapons. Flare guns, um, to be honest, they're probably kind of useless. Um... The only thing they're, they're really good for is against, I guess, like zombies, which only show up in a couple parts of the game. Um, let me see here. Did I, did I finish this part? Oh yeah, and for some reason there is a jump button. It's on the left trigger. Um, not really used that much. Not, not, not many times that you absolutely need to use it. Um, I think they just kind of wanted to use that button a little bit. I mean, it works. It jumps, but, uh, yeah, see, this is the flare gun, not, not very useful as a weapon. Let's switch over to the machine gun. Uh, this is actually, like, a bit of an upgraded machine gun, one of the better ones you can get. I kind of like this a little bit more, just, uh, because this game does actually have a very generous kind of auto-targeting to it. And, uh, and with, like, machine gun and stuff, as you can see, the character just kind of pointing. I can just kind of go like that. And actually, that was just go, and that was just mo moving the right stick, but if I was moving towards them, you see, that, that right there, all this is just, is just me just using the left stick. I did not touch the right stick at all. And, uh, and that's part of where this game, where, where its controls actually are really good, and part of, a large part of what makes it still fun and still good to play because it's actually not very hard to just pick it up and start doing stuff. Um, and and their control, like I said, at first they may seem a little bit confusing with how you're switching between so many things and using the right trigger to do so many things, but it actually does flow pretty nicely once you get the hang of it. And And it's usually, and it's actually usually pretty simple to just kind of go between powers on that and just keep and just and just kind of keep a nice little flow to your actions which you know in, in in any sort of gauntlet type game or or game that's kind of like that's just an action paced game like this that kind of flow can be very important okay do let's go over here. I'm gonna see if I can finish this level out, and then I think uh, after that I'll probably call it. Um, we'll see how this level goes. Maybe a bit of a longer one. Sometimes these levels. Oh, here we go. Possessed humans. Just what I was talking about. No, I need to find holy ammo. Keys.
No, I'm gonna shoot the guy. I don't wanna shoot him. Yes, that's right, folks. I am shooting a ghost with an assault rifle. And it's hurting it, too. I ate that awesome. I want more games where I do that. I don't, I don't care if it's not supposed to make sense. I want to shoot ghosts with assault rifles. Flamethrower them. Why not? That works, too. Actually, it does. Yeah, take it off. Oh. Flamethrower the gas! <laughs> Ooh, that could be nasty. Guess that gas isn't very flammable. Oh yeah, can't forget the music. Which goes from, like, making sense to strange. Um, and seems to be triggered when that whenever there's a lot of enemies around. Oh no, smoke bombs! Guy doing thing. He buffs his. He, oh yeah, there's some enemies who can buff other enemies. I just set them on fire. It's easier. But holy ammo. And this is what it looks like. And they glow. Why is uh, that is that is a very ugly yellow. And then these here. Uh, it's basically like little power ups. Says armor glyph. Basically, I have some extra, some extra health, life to do stuff with. Let's u let's use up this flamethrower. You know, those flame effects actually aren't too bad. Okay, I gotta be getting almost done with this level. Oop. See, right now, I'm actually trying to do something. Because, see, those guys with the shield, they, of course, stop um, any ranged attacks, and they rotate the face to you. But that one edge I use, it's called, like, Burden or something, basically just paralyzes them. Um, hey, rocket launcher. Well, I can always do with some rockets to the face of people. Did I just... What did I just do there? That was pretty cool. Okay. I know I've got to be done with this. There just can't be too much less. Is, is there a whole nother one? Jeez, wow. Getting a little bit repetitive at this point. But, you know, it moves along at a nice pace. It's not like... It's not like they just have you sit somewhere. You know, you're on the move. You're doing stuff. Okay, let's switch back to melee. A lot of guys here. Okay. This is where the game actually really does shine. Um, is is when there are a lot of enemies at once. Because then, because then you're just kind of going around just beating the crap out of them. And a lot of times there's like your high priority and stuff like that. And it's just really cool to do stuff like this and just like buff yourself and then just like rip through like 10 or 20 of them in like 2 seconds. Blown up more gas canisters. Yeah, and those ghosts apparently come from the, the gas canisters. Um, it's definitely strange. Oh, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not really all that picky. Um, in fact, in fact, they never really actually explain where those ghosts come from in the course of the game, um, or at least why they come from the gas. They just do. It, in fact, all you're ever told is the toxin is reacting strangely, and then the ghost show up and possesses the guy. Okay, did I see another ghost? All right, probably not. No, right, let's let's finish this off. This has got to be getting close to being finished here. Well, I'm doing this. So I'm going to go back to talking about the unlockables. I know I mentioned earlier how how you can unlock a lot of monsters and actually play as them. And one of the monsters you can unlock is those soldier guys, um, and they have all their moves that they have 
when they're when they're fighting you. It's kind of interesting. There's also like vampires. They are just like these like female vampires. They're actually pretty neat. And there's, and there's even some like enemies that like kind of like joke enemies. Like like these guys that I'm fighting right here. You you can unlock the ability to play as them. There's also zombies. Uh, playing as a zombie is hilarious because uh, you just die like right away. Um, and then there are also some other hidden characters as well. Uh, other than the ones that I showed you, uh, there's also a werewolf that you can play as. Um, he's pretty cool. I mess around with him. And, um, and a lot of other stuff. Mostly like concept art, things like that. Um, you know, I wonder exactly how many people avoid gunfire being attacked by just running in figure eights. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's. I gotta be getting close into this level here. Because I got another key. Yeah, Alright, about 20 minutes. Hmm. I think I am gonna wanna see if I can't just get this finished up here. I don't know, that's just the thing. This game is, is actually really addicting. I could, I could totally just sit here for like the next three hours and just bash stuff in and. And do stuff like, cause it does it it, it does get kind of mindless after a while, and that can be a lot of fun. But um, if you really if you really really want to get really good, there is actually some tactics involved, and actually just 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 knowing how you want to approach things comes in handy. Oh, there's the exit. I think I'm just about done here. So we're probably gonna be wrapping this up. Yep, yep, that's about it. Um, just keep track of stuff. And uh, and then I can save. Um, I would totally love it if this game were to be actually released on Xbox Live, or to kind of come back. Um, I know since since this game has come out, there's been a lot of this sort of twin stick shooters and stuff, especially in the area of zombies, which I do love. But I, I'm willing to admit it's been kind of saturated. Uh, this game, um, I think I think with the setting, it's at least it's at least unique enough. That I could see it get, get getting some potential, and believe it or not, it does actually work. Um, this melee that I'm doing, or that I was doing, um, is also one of the earlier times I've seen kind of uh, analog stick based melee. Of course, not really. You just kind of control where you're facing with it, but um, and then you use the right trigger to um, to just kind of go forward. But it actually works fairly well um, overall. And there actually is a fairly deep combo system, um, except unfortunately it's not really needed. Um, but overall, the game, I mean, it still plays very smoothly, um, as you're seeing. It doesn't look terrible. It's not, you know, it doesn't hold up quite as well as some other games, like, say, Death Row, for instance. But definitely looks decent enough. Um, certainly matches up to some Xbox Live games I've seen, uh, things like that. Um, and uh and and I think this could just be a really great just kind of like party game thing like that. All right. Well, uh that's it for this episode of uh, Strangely Normal. Uh thank you very much for watching. Um if you like this, please like the video. Um tell your friends, tell your family. Any suggestions, uh definitely feel free to send me an email at uh, strangelynormalgamer at gmail.com. Also uh on Twitter um at uh, strangelynormal uh with the L as a 1 on that. Um, for some reason that's just the way it is. Um, thank you very much for, for, once again, for watching, and, uh, I will, and I will see all of you, uh, next week.